Hello everyone, I'm joined today by, um, uh, by Steve, Steve Leonard. Not a new face to the tech ecosystem, uh, no pun intended. Yeah, not a yeah. new face in general. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Steve, you've, um, I might just do a quick intro just for all the people watching and um, um, you know, my take of you know, how I've seen you evolve and you know, how I've seen the market evolve around you as well, right? So you're not new to Asia, you've been outside the US for what, 25 years now? Yeah, coming yeah. up on 30 now. Yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. And um, you've been in leadership roles with large global tech firms. Um, the last few years, you've kind of, I, I like to term it as um, a tech statesman. You've become a technology statesman, right? Thank so, you. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you're a, you're a great brand ambassador for Singapore, right? Um, obviously, we we all saw how involved you were with all the innovation that was taking place um, when you were at IDA, and uh, I mean, that was a big job as well. And then now in your current um, environment, allows you to dress a bit more relaxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and really get your hands dirty with the entrepreneurs. And, um, but look, we're really interested, um, and we've been following the SG Innovate story quite closely. I think it's, um, I mean, it's no secret. I think everyone around the world is always closely watching Singapore, uh, specifically with all the um, initiatives that are backed by the government. Right? I think it's such a strong uh, such a strong play that the government's making, and it's it's folks like yourselves that make it, uh, you know, make it come to fruition. So, um, you know, I thought it'd be really good to, you know, to get your perspective on, um, you know, what I guess what the focus is for SG Innovate from 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 a Singapore perspective. What uh, is expected um, by companies or markets outside Singapore, and of course, what your vision is, um, you know, as a leader. Sure. as a founding CEO of this uh, organization. Sure. Well, I mean, in a nutshell, first, thank you for the opportunity and for the warm words. Uh, SG Innovate is really a team with a very simple mission. And our basic premise is we believe Singapore has invested a huge amount in great education, primary, secondary, and tertiary, and a long-term commitment to science and education in terms of research and academia, but also the applied uh, research and how it can be translated. Yeah. But we haven't, in our opinion, built a sufficient amount of technology capability with all that raw material. So SG Innovate exists to help entrepreneurial scientists that would like to see if they can bring what they're working on to a commercial state, to a market. And our goal is to help them build what we would call an investable deep tech startup. If you look at any of the successful startups, right, the success pivots around impacting and enhancing lives of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you feel with what we're doing with the deep tech startups here and the entrepreneurs here, uh, and a lot of them come from, you know, backgrounds with very deep expertise uh, in technology or they're scientists, um, how focused are they on impacting lives of people as their primary vision? Uh, what I would say is that our argument is deep tech startups are more important to people's lives than a consumer-related technology. So at the risk of being uh, semi-controversial, we don't feel that uh, consumer-facing apps, and I won't go through the names, but there are many obvious names that have attracted significant valuations on Wall Street and elsewhere. We don't feel that those are going to save humanity. They're convenient, and uh, certainly my youngest daughter is one of the active users of some of these technologies. But we also don't think that those are going to uh, necessarily save lives. They can certainly change lives in terms of making it easy to share and people can talk about the Arab Spring and other things that perhaps were enabled by these technologies. But our view is that with significant challenges in healthcare, transportation, public safety, resource management, we think that a deep tech or science-based solution is actually critical. So changing lives, uh, having a positive impact on humanity, yeah. we would argue that what we're trying to work on is exactly that. However, the challenge is that the venture community doesn't necessarily feel the same way because if the venture community, and I uh, think it's perfectly understandable, says I wanna maximize return in the shortest possible time with the least amount of risk, that's not deep tech startup. 
Uh, we have technology risk. When you're working with quantum technologies, you're working with artificial intelligence, autonomous vehicles, that's a lot different than working with a mobile app where your primary goal is onboarding new users. And so from that perspective, we think it's important work that we do, but we think that it's going to be harder work. You know, with all the AI, blockchain, um, applications in life sciences, there's so much going on, right? How do you sort of prioritize and, and where do you see uh, Singapore making the biggest impact? Uh, a couple of different things in there. One is we try to play to a strength. So Singapore has natural strengths in quantum related research. We want to build on that, capitalize on that. When we talk about AI, other countries have more research in terms of scale, just simply because of our size. Yeah. But we are specializing, we, Singapore, are specializing in the natural language interface portion of AI, so that's a strength for us. We also have a lot of work around computer vision. So we try to play to a strength, but it's important to know that we don't try to play to every capability. We have to be good in a niche. So when we say computer vision, other countries, just purely based on having more humans, will have more deployment opportunities, more data inputs. So we have to be excellent in a particular area. How can we be the best in computer vision for pathology, for example, as opposed to saying mammography, because there are dozens and dozens and dozens of teams around the world working on computer vision for mammogram. So we say, well, let's not try to compete in an already busy space. So we try to specialize. But I think the important point here is perhaps less about the creation of the technology and more about the deployment and use of technology. Although autonomous vehicles may be something that people are interested and curious about, the societal impact of trying to use autonomous vehicles, change legislation to enable it, change insurance paradigms to think about how to cover it is uh, not a small matter. And so I think that's where our advantage as Singapore ought to be, which is to be aggressive users of technology in addition to proactive builders of technology. If we only focus on the build and not on the use, then we'll be builders for other people. Right? And we already have a few situations where some of our startups are building, but they're finding early traction in other countries. And part of what we need to do is make sure that we're also using the technology that we're excited to be building.